Hello everyone and welcome to the very first virtual meeting of Crowlers and Ledford WI. Um, these are very strange times that we're in, um, but the committee, we've been working very hard on this little presentation and we hope you'll all enjoy it. Um, first of all, let me just say I hope you're all staying safe and looking after yourselves and following all the NHS and government guidelines so that we can get through this strange thing as quickly as possible and all be back to normal again as soon as we can. Um, let me just explain to you what we're going to do in this little presentation. Um, first, you're going to listen to me waffle on for a bit. If I keep looking down, it's because I've got notes. Um, after I have a few words with you, I'm going to hand you over to Wendy, who will give us a brief treasurer's report. Um, following that, we've got some little intros by members of the committee so that you can get to know us all a bit better. After that, we're going to have our monthly speaker. And I don't know if you'll remember, but our April speaker cancelled some time ago, nothing to do with coronavirus. Um, and we, our replacement speaker is Alison Latham, who's going to tell us a little bit about um, her OBE and the process. And um, that should be really interesting. After that, um, we're going to take a little break from listening and do some doing. We've got some um, very gentle chair exercises with Jackie. So we'll get everyone moving around a little bit. And to finish up with, we've got a lovely little craft demo from our friend Carrie Scaife from St. Mary's Isles of Silly WI. So that's the plan. Um, normally our meetings start with signing the record of the previous meeting. We're not going to do that now. Um, we'll have a lot of meeting records to sign once we're all back together. Um, the next thing is correspondence. And we had a lovely card from Janet with a lovely red setter on it. Um, thanking everyone for making the um, syringe driver bags. And Janet just says, I just wish to express my thank you, my thanks to you personally, and all our members and committee members for the sterling efforts made to produce the syringe driver bags for the Lowen Ward at the Royal Criminal Hospital at Trelisk. They were very gratefully received and are already in use. So um, big thank you to anyone who helped make those. Um, the other bit of correspondence, some of you may have missed this, it came with the April issue of County News, no, sorry, of WI Live, and it was on the, um, the address sheet. I'm covering up my address, but the address sheet that's inserted on top of your magazine. And on the back of that is a letter from Lynn Stubbings, who's our national chair. Um, and some of you may have remembered meeting Lynn at the annual council meeting last autumn in Red Ruth. And one of the things that she says in her letter, obviously this was written because the April issue had already gone to press um, before the pandemic came along. Um, so there's no mention of the pandemic in the April issue. But Lynn says, today the world looks very different. We're in challenging times, but the good news is that WI members have always been practical and resourceful, and I'm sure these traits will prevail in this current crisis. So, in the spirit of being resourceful, we're here online today. That's why we're doing all of this. Um, I wanted to let you know that um, County News is still being produced um, by the Federation, only it's not printed. There won't be hard copies to hand out. Um, obviously, it's impossible for us to have them printed. There are no WI members to pack them up in envelopes. The office is closed. Um, and there's no way for um, our secretary, Jackie, to get them out to you. So there is an electronic version of County News, which is, is on our website now. It's on the county website and on Crowley's and Ledgeman website. And um, I think by this point should have been emailed to all of you. If you know of any other members in Crowless and Ludgwin who don't have access to the internet and are not able to see it, if you could print a copy off and post it to them, that would be fantastic. And um, we can reimburse you for postage from WI funds. That's no problem at all. We want to make sure everyone gets all the news they can. There are some Federation events that are still being planned for later in the summer and the autumn um, going forward. Um, there's no guarantee that these won't be cancelled, but for now, we do have some events. There is some heavenly greenery flower arranging at Falmouth Methodist Church on the 22nd of July. On the 28th of July, Weaving for Beginners, which will be at Chain Hours. 10th of August, A Day at a Vineyard, which is at the Bazoo Vineyard in St. U. 4th to the 6th of September, Cake Craft and Camping. I know some of you went last year and had a really good time, so perhaps a few more of you want to go this year. 7th of September, this is something quite local to us, Take a Town, um, ongoing series, Take a Town, where we travel around the county and go to different places, and this time it's Hale, which is a talk and tour 
um, of Hale with our friend Trevor Smitherum. Some of you might be interested in that. On the 15th of September, a smartphone photography workshop in Mevagizzi. And the very last item, it's really just uh, a reminder to save the date. The Christmas Carol Service, Federation Christmas Carol Service, will be at St. Petrox in Bodmin on the 4th of December. And I'm pretty sure that event will go ahead, even if some of the others get cancelled. Um, our own events, our own Crowless and Legend events, are, of course, on hold at the moment. Um, but some groups are still managing to meet in interesting ways. Our book group is meeting by Zoom, which is really fantastic. And if anyone would like to join them, please get in touch. Um, they're meeting, the next book they're reading is 1984 by George Orwell, and that will be on Friday the 15th of May by Zoom. So please send us an email um, if you're interested and we'll get you in touch. Um, Camera Club is also sort of meeting. Um, Lisa is setting us lovely weekly challenges and um, we're then posting our three favorite photos on each week's theme to our Facebook page and voting on the favorite. Um, we've had interesting challenges like we did black and white, straight lines, and this week it's wood. So I'll be out searching in the garden for some interesting tree trunks. Um, that's about it for all of our events. At our main meeting, um, many of you bought little packets of seeds to grow your own loofahs. And I know I've seen pictures of Sylvia's online, but if anyone else has had any success in growing their loofahs, please send us pictures. We'd love to see them. We'd love to post them. So show us your loofahs. And one final thing, I thought it'd be a bit fun to have a competition, no prizes, just the glory of winning. Um, in these funny times, we're all going through our store cupboards. We've got time to clear out our kitchens and we're trying to cook with interesting ingredients that we may have forgotten we had. So I thought it'd be fun for people to see who has the oldest item in their store cupboard. I didn't do very well. I found this jar of coriander with a best before date of 2010. So that's 10 years, which isn't great. Um, there is a rumor floating around that a member of the committee has something from, um, I think, the 1980s. So if you can do better, please let us know. Um, that's all from me for the moment. I'm going to hand you off now to Wendy, who will give us a little update on our finances. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Wendy Leo, Crowless and Ludgevin, um Treasurer. Um, I just wanted to give you a, a brief report for this very unusual meeting. Um, obviously, our funds, of which we have adequate at the moment, are secure in the bank. However, part of that funds is checks that people had paid in advance of activities, both for local events and for county events. Obviously, all of those events have been cancelled now and everybody who has already paid will be entitled to a refund. Um, those refunds will be issued when we next meet face to face, um, simply because of the logistics during lockdown of getting check signed by two members. If any of you have any issue with that, don't hesitate in getting in contact with me. Um, in addition to that, I will this month be sending off our contribution to Federation for the fees. Um, there were several people who um, had had checks returned by the bank, all of whom I contacted. If you were contacted by me and haven't yet managed to issue another check to me, if you could try and do that as soon as possible, either by sending me another check or by paying with backs, that would be really helpful because then I can put your contribution in uh, when I pay the one bill account to county. Um, one other thing, while you are all at home and while we're on lockdown, just to remind you, if anybody has any spare fabric and spare capacity and ability, we still want small drawstring bags for collecting um, checks and money in at meetings. We have a small collection of them, but because obviously they'll be in rotation and when everybody's paying for things, we want them to put them in the bags. I would be really grateful for any that came. We were trying to do it with um, old and recycled fabric, but any fabric that you've got would be absolutely brilliant. So thank you very much for that. Um, look forward to seeing you whenever we have our next face-to-face -face meeting. In the meantime, stay safe and look after yourself. Bye. Thank you very much for that, Wendy. Um, I think you'll all agree with me that although we're not in a position at the moment to do any fundraising, obviously, um, our finances are in very good hands with Wendy. Um, next, I'd like to introduce some little um, bios videos that members of the committee have, have made for you. Um, it occurred to us that perhaps you don't know all of us that well. 
So I hope you enjoy these. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Julie Blewett. I live in Ludgeman. I've been a member of the WI for a few years now. I've worked in health for quite a number of years in clerical work. Um, for the past 14 years, I've worked for social care, working as an occupational therapy P assistant um, in the community. Um, recently, I've changed employment and I now work for the Harborside Physiotherapy in Newlyn. Um, I'm married to David. Um, David runs his own plant hire business. Uh, we have two grown up children, uh, Katie, who's a dental nurse and lives locally. And Liam is our son who lives up in Shrewsbury and works as an electronics engineer. Um, so we haven't seen him for a little while. I'm the newest member of the committee, uh, only been on the committee for a few days. Uh, I enjoy the social side uh, of the WI. Um, I've particularly enjoyed the walking netball, the uh, Nordic walking that we do, and Shirley's monthly walks. So you try and uh, take part in those. Um, the crafts um, are always good things to, to, to do. Um, there's some flower arranging as well, which has been good. Um, these things allow you to try um, activities that you perhaps wouldn't get a chance to do normally. Um, I've been to Denman once, which was good. I'd like to go again. Um, I even took part in the Eden Project zip wire challenge last year. Uh, very much out of my comfort zone for that one. Um, apart from WI, I like to do baking, um, Pilates, um, and I'm a member of a singing group as well. Like so many of us at the moment, um, things have had to be put on hold. We were due to go to Norway at the beginning of June um, as a family. Um, but um, yeah, things have had to, to stop, haven't they? So um, I hope we can all get together again soon and take care of yourselves. Thank you. Hi, I am Jan Bone. I joined Cronus and Ludgeman at the beginning of 2018, just after moving down from London and the committee not long after that. I enjoy the WI very much and its ethos of inspiring women. I was a dental nurse manager after training at the Royal London Hospital for Dentistry and worked in community health services in South West London with patients for spe with special needs for nearly 40 years. I've done all sorts of other kinds of things as well and I'm a further education teacher. Um, what else can I tell you? I have a hobby of art and I'm here in my studio and I'm very lucky that like Di, I can walk away and leave things if I've not finished something. Um, I paint a lot and I enjoy reading, sewing and art of all kinds. Hello everyone, my name is Diane Kerno and I am part of the Crowdis and Ledgeman committee. My job mainly is to do the minutes of our committee meeting and our monthly meeting. But as we will not be able to meet during April, we've all decided to do a little video for you. I used to live at Kakarian near Ludfun, but 18 months ago, my husband and I moved to a smaller property at Mount Lydon in Penzance. It was an older style property and needed a lot of work, which suited my husband because he used to be a carpenter. We've had to completely renovate the house with new electrics, new plumbing, kitchens, bedrooms, and of course, the garden, which was very overgrown. Luckily, we both enjoy gardening, and recently the good weather has been helpful. I have two grown up sons. One is a teacher, and the other is a farmer, but also a baker. I have one grandchild, Rebecca, who is 19 months old, and she is due to have a little brother, our grandson, in June this year. I've been a member of the, of the WI for about eight or nine years and I've enjoyed it immensely. I've made a lot of friends and I've learnt a lot of new skills, including scuba diving, card making 
and lots of crafts thanks to the help of Val Paddyfoot who is very talented. At the moment I'm making this video in a shed. It's not an ordinary shed, it's my shed, a she shed, the opposite to a man cave. This is my little sanctuary. In here I can do sewing, reading, knitting, whatever I like. And at the end of the day, if I haven't finished the task, I don't have to pack up, I can carry on the next day. Men are not allowed. We're all going through a difficult time at the moment because of the current coronavirus, but we hope soon that this will be over and we can get back to normal. Meanwhile, take care, stay face, stay safe, look after yourselves. Bye. Hi, my name's Sally. I joined the WI about a year ago with my mum Anne. I became a committee member last month, so I'm very new to this. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been a nurse for 34 years. I've always worked with children. And two years ago, I became a member of the Youth Offending Service. I'm now a specialist nurse and I work with young people aged 10 to 18. Um, and I absolutely adore it. The young people are so fantastic. They've got a lot, such a lot to give. Um, it can be really challenging at times, um, but a lot of them go on to make some really big changes in their life. So it can be really rewarding. In my spare time, I love singing. I'm a member of Penzance Choral Society. I can't sight read like my husband, Peter, who is also a member. So I have to work a bit harder than him. And um, I have to use practice tapes and use resources online to learn all my choral works that we sing. My other passion is bowling. And due to COVID-19, I won't be doing any bowling this season, I don't believe, which is quite sad. Um, but we bowl April to September. And it's a fantastic game. It's wonderful. And the community is brilliant. On the, um, in the winter season, we do short mat, which is indoors. And I'd urge you to give it a go. It's great fun. It really is. You're indoors, you're in the warm. And it's much shorter games, but great exercise. So I moved to Cornwall 11 years ago. And that was to be near my mum and dad, uh, which I'm so glad that we did. My parents have lived here for over 30 years. Family is really important to me. Um, and just to say that I've really loved being part of the WI, I've learned a lot and recently at Val's house on a craft day I actually used the sewing machine, I made an apron and I didn't think I had that in me. Anyway, hope to see you all again soon back at WI. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Jackie Gotch. I originally came from Birmingham where I lived with my husband John and two children. I met John when I was a dancer in a show called South Pacific. He played the part of Luther Billis and our love of theatre was what brought us together. I had a dancing school in Birmingham, a big one that kept me busy, and John and I ran a musical theatre company together until we moved here. I joined the WI with my friend Liz South. I wasn't going to stay very long because I didn't think it was going to be for me. But how wrong was I? I soon found out that the room was full of lovely ladies who made me feel really welcome. I love doing all the craft things we do, especially the card making. Of course, I'm one of the ladies who makes your cards for your birthdays. And I post them, hopefully in time. I also like the outings we go on. We do such a lot with the WI and... I hope that we carry on for many, many years. I've recently become the new secretary, but I feel a bit of a fraud because there's nothing to report, really, is there? But I'm hoping that soon this will change. So stay safe, everyone, and hopefully we'll see you all soon. Bye. Hi, I'm Helen Kessel and I am president of Crowless and Ludgeman WI. Um, I've been president before in the dim and distant past and now I'm back, although this is a very strange time to be taking over as president of a WI when I can't even see any of the members face to face. Um, but we all hope it won't last too much longer. And my wonderful committee and I are still meeting and still working hard to get some information out to you and we hope we're doing an okay job. Um, I'm also involved with the WI on the Federation level, um, on the Board of Trustees. I'm currently um, Vice Chairman for Cornwall. I'm also a WI Advisor and I sit on the Combined Arts Subcommittee and the Floral Art and Gardening Subcommittee, 
Although my dirty little secret is I don't know anything about gardening. Um, when I'm not involved with the WI, I um, work part time at Whole Again Communities in Penzance on the Trinier Estate. Um, we're a social enterprise. We teach cookery, um, affordable, healthy cookery um, to local residents. We also teach gardening. We have a small organic community garden and we teach upcycling and recycling as well. It's a really rewarding place to work. Um, we have a lovely team and I enjoy it very much. Um, when I'm not doing that and, or doing any WI work, I like to read and I like to cook. Um, for those of you who don't know, I live in La Land with my husband Guy and two wonderful cats, Harry and Mungo. Um, in my former life, I was a graphic designer. I was born in Pembrokeshire, then moved as a child to Cornwall, lived in Falmouth and Truro. Um, we then moved to Mauritius, where my father is from, um, then to Northwest Canada for some reason, and then to the deep south of America, to Louisiana, again, for an unknown reason. Um, I went to university in New England, in Rhode Island, um, and in 2003 moved back to the UK in Pembrokeshire, to Pembrokeshire again, and then back to Cornwall. So if the pattern is going to repeat itself, it means I'm due for a move to Mauritius any day now. Fingers crossed. Um, hope to see you all again in person very soon. Bye. Hi, I'm Wendy Leo, Crowlison Ludgevin WI committee member and treasurer. This is my second year on the committee and my second year as treasurer. I joined the committee because I like to be involved in things and it's certainly given me the opportunity to do that, as has being part of the wider WI community. I think the highlight of my time in the WI so far has been the trip a few years ago to the Isles of Scilly as part of the Isles of Scilly exchange. But actually, I enjoy all aspects of WI life, particularly meeting people and trying new things. As part of this web meeting, we on the committee thought it would be quite good to tell you a little bit about ourselves. So here goes. I'm originally from Buckinghamshire, but I've lived all over the UK, um, from London to the Shetland Isles and down to Cornwall via North and South Wales and all over Middle England. I moved to Cornwall about 24 years ago, and that was because 35 years ago I married a Cornishman and having followed him all over the UK for REF postings, when he retired from the REF and moved to Cornwall, there was no option but to follow him. We first moved in St. Just, moved to St. Just, which is where my husband's from, and then we moved to this house 23 years ago. Interestingly, this house was built by the husband of one of our WI members, and previously it was lived in by a different WI member. Um, in my careers, I started working life as a nurse. I trained at St. George's Hospital in London um, and nursed all over. I nursed in London and then all over in different places that I was um, living. But when I was 40, I took my social work degree and became a social worker. And when I finished work two and a half years ago, I was working in the team that support children in care and those in need of protection. I really enjoyed my job and I don't rule out returning to it sometime. Um, I think that's everything for now. I hope when we return to normality, whatever normality is, that we can start having proper meetings. But in the meantime, stay safe, look after yourself. Bye. Hello, my name is Sue Thomas. I was Sue Knights. I'm married with three children, married to a beef farmer, live locally. Um, so that's more or less what I spend my time doing. I've been a member of Crowless and Ledger and WI for 12 years and I've done a lot of amazing things with the WI and had an amazing time. So um, I'm currently one of the committee members. I've been a committee member for quite a few years. can't remember exactly how many now, but uh, we've had a lot of fun. And uh, although it can be hard work at times, it, it is very, very rewarding. Um, so 
this is a new a new thing for me. I don't think I've ever done a video of myself. I don't even like having photographs taken, so it's quite a challenge. But I think by the time we've uh, come out of the situation we're in now, we'll all be um, are much more comfortable using technology and certainly um, doing video conferencing. Um, fortunately, our new president, Helen, is um, a very adept in technology area and um, is able to put together this wonderful presentation. Um, so hopefully this this will be um, helpful to you all. So you can put a name to my face for those that don't know me. Although actually I don't think that is many of you. <laughs> but um, anyway, I hope you're all managing, managing okay in these times and look forward to seeing you all when we come out the other end. Okay, thank you, bye. Hello everybody. Uh, my name is Karen Turf and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Yorkshire, born in Harrogate, but grew up on Humberside. I taught geography in Berkshire for about 12, 13 years um, and then we moved down to Cornwall. Uh, we moved to St Ives and we ran a bed and breakfast in St Ives for about nine years before moving over to Lunchman. Um, I live in Vela Nowarth with my husband Martin and my son James. Uh, my daughter Georgina is at the moment living in Hertfordshire and is training to be a clinical psychologist. So I've got no idea when I'm going to see her again. Uh, I've been a member of the WI for about four years. Um, I've just joined the committee and uh, I didn't expect really to be making a video, that would be the first thing that I would be doing. Uh, it's a little bit daunting, um, rather strange. Um, I particularly like doing all the, class, the crafty classes. I'm not very good at it, um, but I enjoy doing them. Uh, I always look forward to Christmas wreaths and Christmas table decorations with Shirley. That's always great fun. Um, I hope that we're going to be able to see each other again very soon um, but in the meantime look after yourselves and stay healthy thank you hello my name is rosie weston and we moved here to cockwell six years ago from Surrey. over the past five years as a member of our wi i have particularly enjoyed meeting members including those from the isles of Scilly, on our exchange trips since becoming a member of our committee my main responsibility is to man the sales table at our monthly meetings as this helps boost our funds. Thank you all so much for your support over the years. My hobbies include cooking and working on our allotment. I also enjoy helping my husband care for our small flock of sheep. I hope you enjoy seeing our newborn lambs. Stay safe. So now that you feel you know us all a bit better, I'm going to introduce Alison to give her talk about uh, being nominated and receiving her OBE at Buckingham Palace. And if you've always wanted to know exactly how short Prince Charles is, you'll want to listen to this. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Well, they'd invited me to be the substitute April um, speaker, and here I am, not quite in the format we'd all planned, um, but I'm delighted to put together a video version of my talk called Path of Honour. And um, the only difference is we're not in the Merley Hall. It won't be as long as I had planned, and I certainly won't have the DVD um, that I wanted to show you uh, to support what it is that I'm going to talk to you about. Now, Path of Honour um, is really all about my experience of being nominated um, for and receiving the honour of becoming a member of the Order of the British Empire. And I think the easiest thing is for me to use my experience to explain how the honour system works. It's very complex, there's lots of people involved. 
Um, and uh, at the end of the day, it's a great honor um, to, to, for me to receive it and to, to be able to share the, the experience with you. Um, I received my nomination um, with the New Year's Honours list in 2012. But the, um, that was really uh, the end of the process or the middle towards the end of the process because uh, it was several months before that that um, the, the process began. Um, everything's coordinated by the uh, Honours and Appointments Secret Secretariat at the Cabinet Office. Um, but my story began with my ambassador at the British Embassy in Washington, um, Sir Nigel Scheinwald, putting forward my name to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office for them to include with their list of nominations um, to um, be recipient of the um, award. And that's probably around March, April time um, for the New Year's Honours list um, uh, for December 2012. Um, now, not all nominations are successful, but mine was approved by the um, Foreign Secretary and then ultimately the Queen and then filtered back down through that same chain um, for the Ambassador to then invite me to his office um, to discuss the award. And the first I got to know about it was when I received um, uh, a phone call from the ambassador's private office asking me to go and see him the following day at 1pm. Now when the ambassador calls you, you don't ask what it's about, you just go prepared for anything. And I was under the impression that he'd invited me to his office to discuss a report that had just received, uh, that we'd just received, that covered some major work, um, it was a, a project that I'd been involved with, um, that he wanted to discuss. And for the next 24 hours, I basically studied that report from cover to cover, uh, ready for any question he could put to me. And needless to say, when he um, told me why, why I was there, uh, my, hit, my chin hit my chest, um, and it took me a while um, to, to realize why I was there. Um, and that process is actually called um, inviting you to accept the award. Um, not everybody accepts the reward. Um, some famous people have uh, refused the award, such as the Beatles, for example, back in the 60s uh, during their roguish days, they turned down their nominations. Um, but um, I was delighted to accept the, um, the nomination and um, was sworn to secrecy for about six to eight weeks um, because you're not permitted to tell anybody at all and you're bursting to just let everybody know um, that uh, you've been invited to receive the honour. Um, and it's not in my particular case. It, it wasn't until New Year's Day um, in 2012 that I was permitted to let everybody know that I'd been um, nominated to receive the reward. Um, now you'll see news headlines, um, local and national news, and also the newspapers release the names of the famous people that have received their rewards, awards. And if you turn the pages, you'll find the full lists. But it's only one, um, uh, one newspaper, if you like, that contains the official list. And that is the London Gazette, which is this document here. And it's, it's a multi-page document that is put out every day that the British government and particularly the Crown have used um, to, um, to release all of their official announcements. Um, and it's been used since um, 1665 um, when it was originally known as the Oxford Gazette. Um, and, and the reason one um, newspaper is used is because there's no guarantee that other media outlets um, reported um, both then and nowadays um, false or inaccurate news or historically released news that was false um, that had been provided by enemies to the crown. Um, and, you know, we didn't have TV, we didn't have um, uh, radio during those days. So people relied on the London Gazette to get um, accurate news. And I found quite an interesting snippet. Um, and that was that uh, Charles II and the Royal Court had actually moved to Oxford 
um, when um, uh, during the Great Plague of London, um, and the courtiers were unwilling uh, to touch London newspapers at, at that time for fear of contagion um, of, of the Great Plague. Now, talk about history uh, renewing itself, um, but uh, I thought that was an interesting snippet for nowadays. Um, so, once your name appears in this, um, you know it's official, you can go and tell everybody. Um, the next start, uh, part of the process is for me to select a date of when I would like to um, receive my award. Um, I'm permitted to, um, as, as I was living overseas at the time, I was permitted to choose a date and also venue. And I could choose to receive it in Washington from my ambassador or from um, either Buckingham Palace or Holyrood House or Windsor Castle. And as with most people, I decided to opt for Buckingham Palace. Um, I think you feel like a, a true VIP when you go to Buckingham Palace. And um, when you go there, you really are made to feel like a VIP. And um, I took three guests with me. Um, I was per permitted to take three guests. So my husband, my mum and my brother came along with me. And we had an absolutely fabulous day. Everybody is presented with a programme of the investiture um, on the day. And um, it lists everybody who's going to receive the awards. And if you look sort of here, um, I hope you can read that. You'll see my name um, for services to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, Miss Alison Latham. So that, that's another of the souvenirs that I got to take away with me. Now, when we arrive at the palace, I'm, I'm split from my guests. They go one way up the staircase and I go the other. Um, and um, I'm taken into a room with all other guests where they have instruction on what's going to happen on the day and uh, where you go, when you go, um, um, how you curtsy, um, when you know when your time's up and um, all very useful stuff. And you're not actually made aware of who's going to present the award until the day. Um, in my particular case, it was Prince Charles who presented my award. Uh, now, I'd met him several times before, um, absolutely love Prince Charles, so I was delighted that I received my medal from him. Um, and uh, when I, my name was called forward, I walked into uh, the big hall in front of everybody, uh, did my curtsy, walked up to him, and uh, he presented my medal to me. And this was put on my chest. I'd got a little pin for him to secure the medal onto. Um, and uh, after a minute of talking to him, I was then, um, it's like a, a, when, when he's shaking your hand, you know your time's up because it's almost like a little push that he gives when uh, there's indication that you back up, give your turts a curtsy and then um, walk out of the, out of the room. Uh, now there are video cameras and official photographers that you don't know are there that are filming you throughout the um, event. Um, and uh, uh, at the end of it all, you're invited to uh, buy this DVD and also official photographs on the day. Um, you're, I'm only allowed to wear this on certain days. Um, they're known as collar days, and there's about 12 or 13 collar days throughout the year um, that I'm allowed to wear this. Uh, I've not worn it since I received it. Um, another interesting snippet, you can only wear it during daytime hours. But one thing I do have that I'm permitted to wear is um, a little pin, which some of you may have seen me wear at meetings. And uh, it's, it's like a tie pin that I can wear on the upper left hand side um, of my uh, whatever clothing I'm wearing at the time. And that has the, the heads of, um, I think that's the Queen and um, I'm not sure who else is on there actually, but the wording on there is for um, uh, for God and Empire. Uh, so that is, is a real honour to be able to wear that. Um, I'll show you two or three other bits and pieces that um, I was given on the day. Um, one um, is, where are we? Oh yes, here we go. It's a nice one for you to look at. This here is the warrant that I received. I'm sorry about the line sh light sh shining on that. But at the top, that is actually signed by Queen Elizabeth. And you'll see Prince Philip's signature here. Now he is the Grand Master of the Order. And uh, that is scrolled up when you receive it. 
and um, I, I've actually got mine framed and put on the wall. Um, the reading is quite, uh, the writing is quite, um, quite interesting. I'll, I'll start reading some of it um, uh, to you to, so you can get an idea of the language that's used. Um, so it starts, Queen Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, and Sovereign of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, to our trusty and well-beloved Alison Latham, greeting. Whereas we have thought fit to nominate and appoint you to be an ordinary member of the civil division of our said most excellent order of the British Empire, etc., etc. Um, so um, it's it, it's quite lovely to, to have, uh, quite lovely to read, and um, uh, obviously very cherished. Um, along with the order, I received a booklet that's called Statutes of the Order, um, and that goes through the do's, don'ts, cans, cannots, um, multi-page document, 26 pages, um, good bed bedtime reading. Um, now, as a member of the order, um, I'm invited at any time to go along to the chapel of the order um, that is um, at St. Paul's Cathedral. Um, there's a picture of it there. And uh, at any time, I can go to that um, chapel at St Paul's at no cost. Um, I'm also able to get married there. Um, so if I wish to divorce Rob and get remarried, I could um, remarry Rob perhaps uh, in that chapel. Um, my family members, um, any children I have, um, I don't, but if, if I had any children, they could be baptized there. Um, so that, that's also an honor within itself. Um, I've got a couple of photographs to show you as well because some people ask what I wore on the day and um, there we go that's what I wore on the day um, I don't do hats normally but uh, I did a big feathery hat and wore black and white high heel shoes and that's my husband next to me and this is one of the photographs taken by the official photographer uh, outside um, after I'd received my award and one last photograph for you to see is me receiving my award from Prince Charles. Um, you can see how short he is really when you look at me with my heels. Um, but that's these last two photos of one of three or four that I have throughout the house. Um, I think that probably brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope it's not sounded too garbled for you. Um, what I will say is that if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. And what I suggest you do is just submit any questions via the Crowless and Lodgevin uh, email address. Um, and I'll ask that they're forwarded to me. Or for any current members of our WI, if you'd like to ask um, for my personal email address, I give the committee full permission uh, to give my email address to you. Um, send them to me direct at home and I'll get back to you with any questions. Um, that really is the end of my presentation. I, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, keep safe and I look forward to seeing you all again sometime soon. Bye bye now. Thank you so much for that, Alison. What a special day and a fantastic honour for you. Um, and thank you very much for sharing it with us. Now, as promised, we're going to move around a little bit and do some chair exercises with Jackie. Thank you. Hello, ladies. I thought I would give you a little bit of chair exercising to do while you're at home in isolation. If you want, you can join me. If you don't want, you can laugh at me. Is that okay? Here we go.
I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for that, Jackie. I hope you all joined in and enjoyed it. Now, the last thing we have um, in this session is um, a little craft demo from Carrie Scaife. Um, some of you will know Carrie from our twinning with Mary's Isles of Silly WI. She's a good friend of mine and she is very crafty. So she's going to teach us how to make some beautiful cards um, using buttons and other bits and pieces that we have around the house. Enjoy this. Thank you. Hi there. I'm going to show you how I make um, button cards. It, there's nothing particularly difficult about it. It's just a few little techniques that often make them look nicer. Um, this is the sort of thing that I was going to show you how to do. This is a biggie, obviously, um, and you can do much, much smaller ones. But the whole point of this really is that it's probably stuff that you've got lying around, cardboard, recycled paper, buttons. They don't have to be amazing buttons. Sometimes it's just how you put them together and the thread that you use to stitch them on. But anyway, I'll show you how I do it. Um, and then hopefully I'll take some still pictures that Helen can upload if people want to see them a bit more closely. I apologise, I've never filmed myself before and if it's um, not particularly easy to see, I don't know how else to do it. So this is as much as I can do. Anyway, let's sit, let's have a look. So um, what I tend to do is choose the buttons that I want. I'm going to angle it down so you won't see my face, you'll see what's going on on the desk. Here we are. Um, headless woman. So, for example, this one I'm going to make into Christmas baubles. You tend to find that simpler designs work better. Um, so I thought I would just find an arrangement that I like the look of. I mean, obviously you wouldn't particularly want them all in a straight line. So just alter the heights of things a little bit. Um, and then what I find quite useful is to have another identical piece to the card that you're making. Mark where you position things on your master one and then just move them so that you don't forget where you've put everything. So just sort of mark loosely with a pencil roughly in the middle and then using something underneath the card this is a bit of polystyrene packaging but you could equally have a pile of newspapers um, just something to absorb the needle so you're not stabbing the desk. Make a hole in fact the best thing is to go back with your button. Now, this one is a four hole button underneath, but I layered a two hole button on the top. So I'm only going to use two of the holes. So lay your button and mark where the two holes are. All buttons are either two hole, four hole, or they have a stalk at the back, which are no good for this. Line them up with your pencil mark, make your little holes. Now this one, I thought I could have swapped them, couldn't I? This one is a two hole one at the bottom and four hole on the top. So I might just do that actually. Keep the two hole on the two hole button and the four hole on the four hole button. As you can see, you just kind of make it up as you go along, depending on what you've got. And once you've done that, then you've got the choice of do you care about all the workings at the back being visible? I don't particularly, but if you do, you've got two options. You can either make your button stitched piece on a piece of card and then add it to an, a card when you've finished. That way all the workings are hidden behind. Or you can just do what I do and not worry about it. Just leave it visible on the inside. You could cover that with another piece of paper if it bothered you. It doesn't particularly bother me, but that's up to you. Um, now, at some point, you may want to add something before you add the buttons, whether it be a bit of drawing. These are going to be baubles, so I'm going to have them coming down with strings. And I'll add the bow part when I know how much button is covering the string. And uh, you could do this with felt pens, crayons, pencils. You could do it with stitching if you wanted to, be a bit more sewing and a bit less drawing. <clears throat> and then you've got to decide what coloured thread you want to use. And that can make quite a difference, actually. If you look, these heart ones on brown, they're pretty much the same idea, little white buttons on brown card. But one I've stitched with 
very visible red thread and you can probably see with a four hole button you've got a number of different ways you can stitch it on and this one's done much more subtly with white thread on white buttons so choosing your thread is another factor but it you know it's entirely up to you for the purposes of this one i'm using gold partly because it's a christmas one and so that you can see it and then on the reverse you need to just secure the end of the thread before you start somewhere near one of the sets of holes, a little bit of sellotape or washi tape, or whatever you've got. And then you're going through to the front. Now, the whole point about making the holes beforehand is that you then don't bend the card by trying to force it through at the same time that you're trying to stitch the button. So we're going up through the buttons. I'll do a simple cross shape in this one. So going back in, pull it firmly, but obviously not too hard because it is card and it could tear. I tend to go through each hole a couple of times. Once is just a bit too wobbly. Two or three per button is good. Sometimes harder to see where the holes are. If all else fails, you can always just stab the needle through. Nobody's going to mind. I hope none of you are button phobic. I've taught button workshops before, making button jewellery, and I've come across at least three people who have a complete phobia to buttons. One lady actually couldn't even be in the same room as me when I was putting my hand in a tin of buttons. She wasn't on the workshop. She just happened to wander in and then left quite rapidly. So you jump along behind to the next set of holes. This one's really easy. It's just a single button and two holes. You'll see that you can layer buttons up. Sometimes they just sit really nicely one inside the other. I would never go more than three because it just gets a bit unwieldy. But if you've got quite a boring background button like, like that one, Putting a little gold button or a white button or something in the middle definitely makes it look a bit better. Here we go. I'll just quickly do one more. So, yes, yeah, thinking about it beforehand, if you can line two hole button up with another two hole button, it does make your life an awful lot easier, but there's always a way around it. Um, some other ideas for Christmas cards using buttons. Christmas lends itself really well and I'll show you one that I've made before using bits of fabric actually and recycled envelopes and only one or two buttons. But if you think about it, red buttons are perfect little holly berries, white buttons work with mistletoe, big ones work like this for baubles. You can even use it in writing if you did calligraphy and did the word ho 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 or something, the O's could be buttons. So there's lots of things you can do. Also a really good craft to do with children. You can do caterpillars, you can do balloons. Flowers work really well. I'll show you some flowers in a minute. So there we go. I've put the four baubles on, hanging at different heights. To finish off, you just do what you did at the start, really. Take a little piece of tape. down there, find your scissors that you've put somewhere silly and cut it off. There we are. And then because they're meant to be baubles, I would probably just add little strings. If you're not confident to draw and doodle, if you've got any stamping um, stamps, stamping sets and inks, they work really well. There we are. You could always stick or write, happy Christmas, whatever you wanted at the bottom. Um, this is one that I did make using little stamps, just one leaf stamp, but I used three or four different coloured inks and then added red and white buttons to it. Um, but I, I do think flowers work particularly well. This is the mistletoe. So the, the leaves were just a sort of cut out once that was fabric but you could equally do it in paper layer it up on two or three I quite like torn edges 
and then I'd stitched around the leaf shape and just added one little button and then eventually when you're happy with the number of layers you've got add it to a card there you go and the holly would work just as well um right this one you can see on here that I've layered up a number of different buttons got the heart shaped one in there that button's got its own particular pattern but it was so big that I thought it needed a middle that's got a really tiny little middle in but very very simple drawing okay I'm going to call it a day there and I'll take some pictures of other cards that I've made like um, bunches of flowers and I'll show you those later have a go it's good fun and it doesn't cost anything you've probably got everything you need to do it okay bye thank you very much Carrie those are absolutely beautiful cards um, and as Carrie said I'm happy to um, share pictures of those on the website if you want to look at some of her finished products well that brings this session to an end I hope you've enjoyed it um, I hope you're all staying safe and looking after yourselves and your families um, if any, if any of you need help, if you're having trouble getting hold of groceries or need help doing any errands or anything like that, please let us know. Send us an email um, and we'll see if we can get some help to you. Or else you can ring up any of the committee members listed in the programme. Obviously, it's last year's programme, um, but don't worry, ring up any of those names and they'll get the message to the right people. So that's all from me. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye.